All right, what's up? Today we're gonna do something that I've never personally have ever done before. And we're gonna try to flush the transmission fluid out of this 2002 GMC Envoy. It's got the 4L60E just like the Trailblazer does. So we're gonna follow something that we saw on the form. I don't even know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a try. And if it works, well, maybe you guys can do it yourself. If it doesn't work, well, fuck it. So. We're going to do this thing up on the lift here, but the article that this is based off of, the dude did it in his driveway on jack stands, so the same deal applies. You can very well do this on the ground, laying on the ground, but we got the lift, we're going to use it, and it'll give you guys better camera angles, you know what I'm saying? So, let's do it. So, we're underneath the vehicle right now, and from what we read, this is the line we're going to pop off from the cooler right here. So, we're just going to slide this little keeper thing back. And up in there, there's a real tiny clip. Uh, the one thing I will say, if you're doing this in your gravel grass driveway, like I used to work in, is put some cardboard down because these clips, they tend to uh, get away and get into trouble. If you guys remember on my oil lines on my pickup, it had the same deal. And once I pull this line off of here, she's gonna dump some juice. Just got a little drain pan underneath. So I'm just gonna try to wiggle him out. Just like that. So this is kind of the solution that we came up with here because I didn't have a half inch clear hose. So it's a half inch black hose that comes down and then it tees into this clear hose that we've got just an excessively long length of, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so with this tube hooked up to this uh, transmission line right here, what we're going to do is start the engine, keep the transmission in park, and we're going to wait for this thing to pump out a bunch of transmission fluid. From what we read in the article, we're looking at somewhere around six quarts is going to come out of here. Now, I don't have a way to measure what's coming out, so we're really going to look to see when, when the flow stops. Before we do this, my man's just going to pull out this um, transmission dipstick right here. And really, we're just following the article to the T because as stated earlier, I've never done this before. So I don't know if you guys can see this pretty good, but we're gonna see what happens once we, uh, once he starts this thing up, then I'm just gonna, when I see it's not pumping out any fluid, I'm gonna tell him to cut it off. So whenever you're ready, boss. Nasty shit, yo. All right. So as soon as she started kind of like purging like that, like we went ahead and cut it off. So we went ahead and, and measured what we got out of it. We got about four and a half quarts out of it right there. The article said six, we got four and a half. We're okay with that. According to the article, the next thing we're gonna do, get underneath, pull the transmission pan down. We're also gonna change the filter since we're already here doing this stuff. The angle that you're looking at now, the front of the vehicle is that way. There's our transmission pan. We've got 16 bolts that need to be removed to uh, drop this pan down. So we're not gonna sit and show all 16 bolts being removed. All right, they're all loose. All right, they're all loose. That's what the man said. 16 bolts sucks. It could be worse. I am helping. So here's our pan. That's an M. That's for Moloch. <laughs> or Mayo 3. Or both. Oh yeah. Uh, 
I'm helping. So here's our stupid pan gasket. Look at that, feats of strength. I couldn't even get it off. <laughs> I've been doing this since before Bill Clinton got his nomination for being president. That's not what, that's not what I was going to say. Now we're going to replace the transmission filter. On this filter, there's no screws or anything. It kind of just, it just kind of just pops off. So here's a here's a classic debate right here, and the debate is the seal that goes on top of this shaft for the filter right here. Uh, in my personal opinion, that seal should not be fucked with, and. As you can tell, when I really had to rock this thing to kind of get it off of that seal. The seal kind of sits right up in this area. And me personally, I don't replace it. I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to exaggerate. It's tough to get out. I've never had one that was actually broken or leaking. You ever have transmission fluid before? You know what it does? So I've got a fresh bottle of uh, Dex 6 here. I'm just going to kind of Try to lubricate my finger up a little bit. Try to lubricate my finger up a little bit. Like so. Just going to put a little bit around this neck or whatever you want to call this of this filter. Malik, what would you call this? Neck sounds good to me. Okay. I didn't want to get too technical here. No, so. neck is perfect, I think. Cool, cool. I'm just going to line her up with the hole right here. Kind of wiggle, wiggle. She pop right into place just like that. This is kind of like how our gasket is going to be laid out. If you notice when we when we pulled it out we kind of had to wiggle the pan to clear the shift linkage and all that stuff. So to help with this I'm just going to take a little dabs of this uh, weather strip adhesive and we're, we're not going crazy by any means. Yeah. Well I'm just going to put a little bit here bud and maybe a little bit right here. A little bit right here, a little bit right here. We're not even doing any big globs or anything like that. It's just enough to make the surface a little bit tacky, so that way the gasket doesn't shift. Did you just fart on camera? He did. He just farted. Wow. Oh, that's great. Like I said, this way, you know, when we're trying to wiggle this pan around, it's not going to, it's going to be less likely to pop out of place. So, I don't know, three, four, or five minutes later or whatever, she's not going to pop off from us fidgeting around. So it should make making this pan go up and having the gasket not pop off a lot easier. Our little step in the pan is going to be towards the back. And we also know that we kind of got to wiggle around that shift cable without really getting the gasket popped out of place. I should have moved this out of the way first. Holy shit. Now when I'm doing the final pass for tightening these up, the way I personally do it, I don't follow any book or procedure, I just kind of do it my way, is I just go every other bolt and then come back around and do every other bolt, invert it or whatever you want to call it. So if I'm going to start here where this thing is, I'll just go around, snug, I don't have anything crazy, I just got a little um, tiny ratchet. Like I said, every other bolt, boom, done.
So I didn't say this when I was doing that last pass, but it's just uh, another just check to make sure that I got all the bolts because when you've got 16 bolts and you're skipping over and then doing them back again, it's just, it's in my opinion, it's worth the extra time just to make sure that they're all tight. So we're gonna lower the envoy back down. So the next thing, we're gonna dump five quarts of Dexron 6 into the transmission. That's just to, according to the article, is to get the pump primed so it will continue pumping. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna dump five in this piece. Jordan, can you count? Oh, I don't actually, one. <laughs> well, you ever flushed the transmission before, bud? You ever done it without a machine? So, we've got five quarts in the pan right now. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start up the motor. It's gonna start pumping out fluid again. Uh, I'm kinda keeping the camera angle like this so you can see us pouring fluid in at the same time it's coming out at the bottom. I know it's kind of a wide shot, but it's the best we can do. And we're just gonna keep adding until what comes out of that tube right there is the same color as fresh transmission fluid, which is red. So, I don't know, let's give it a go, man. Right now I've got a lot of air coming out. By the seven quart mark, uh, the fluid was looking nice and red like it should, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right at the seventh quart, it actually went the same color that was going in. Okay. It came out the same color that was going in, so I think we got a pretty good flush out of this thing. Right, right. So we put five in the, we put five back in it after we pumped it out and took the pan down, put five back in it. Then seven got us red back here, and since the cooler's probably empty or whatever, you know, we, we're going to have to put a little bit more back in it to get her topped off, so that's pretty cool. So I guess what we're going to do now is what? Pop that line back on and that super clip and... Yep. All right. Yeah, here's kind of a better view of what we used because the article said to use half-inch clear tubing, and for some reason I didn't realize it meant a half-inch inner diameter, so the only tubing I had was... It was a half inch, but the inner diameter was uh, uh, about three eighths or so. Would you say? Maybe. Yeah. So the main's going to just shove that line back in. And it's gonna like pop going in, kind of like there that. Is. You heard that definitive, you know what I mean? Pop going up in there. This is, in my opinion, the hardest part of the job, believe it or not. I just did cooler lines on a uh, Silverado or something, and uh, this clip really gave me some uh, some grief. But fortunately, that didn't happen to us this time, boy. Yeah. Keep your clip back on there. This particular vehicle is a 2002 Envoy. So it might not be the same for all of them since they did a lot of changes between 02 and 03 to 09. So we have our little cold, little hash marks right here. If you look real still, it does say cold inside there. Over here, we have our hot hash marks right here. And if you look real still, it says hot inside there. Really what we're going for now, since the truck just kind of got it started up, the thing is, is that as the transmission fluid warms up, it expands. So that's why you can have a cold reading and a hot reading. So we're kind of like right there. I'm probably going to put in another half a quart just to get it inside these hash marks right here. And we should be good to go. So, like I said at the beginning of this thing, I've never done this thing before. Uh, the places that I've used to work at always had some kind of a, a machine that did the fluid exchange and 
you know, this was posted up on GMT Nation when my buddy Malik here inquired about, you know, the, the transmission fluid quantity, um, how much, what the capacity was, and, you know, he considered, you know, doing a flush on it. Somebody posted a link to an article that was on a very inferior Trailblazer and Envoy form. You know, the form sucks big balls, but I got to give credit where it's due. Uh, the person that posted this procedure goes by the name of APDMC6008. So, Mr. APDMC6008, uh, your method worked, gets my seal of approval, and in fact, my Trailblazer is actually due for a transmission service too. And while I was just going to do a standard uh, filter change, you know, replace five quarts in the, in the uh, transmission filter, I'm actually going to do the same exact procedure on my Trailblazer. Uh, big ups to, I think it was Moose Man on GMT Nation who linked us to this um, article by Mr. APDMC6008. Say that five times fast. And um, like I said, just got to give credit where it's due. i never done this before. I don't take any, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for when you, you say you did something that you didn't do or... I don't want any recognition for doing this or whatever. It is, none of this stuff is on my own. Uh, big thanks to my man Mollick for, you know, bringing his truck down and, and, and putting putting this out there. You know, he could have just as easy went up the street or did it himself. But uh, so let's film this shit. You know what I mean? So big ups to him. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, subscribe.